Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that's fixed the problem. That has fixed it. Yay! It's all gone. That's perfect. That is actually perfect. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Artificial Aviation. In today's episode, I've decided to fix the issues I've been having with these graphical glitches that we've been seeing in VR. Enough is enough. There's only so much of these I can see while I'm trying to fly the airplane, so today we're going to fix it. So I'm going to start working through the settings, attempting to understand where the issue is. Um, if you want to skip to the solution, absolutely feel free to use the chapters marked out below um, and to skip ahead to the answer. If you do stick with me though, you're going to get a bonus in that I'll show you how I found the problem and how I measure and tune the performance of the graphics in the simulator. That'll come in super handy if you're having graphics issues of your own and you need to find out what's wrong or if you just want to get a little bit more out of your simulator performance. In other words, no flying today. Today's all about settings. So what are we sitting around here for? Let's get going. You might have noticed in the last few videos that the graphical quality isn't really what I've come to expect. You'll perhaps notice if I use my mouse pointer here, some like some some like wobbling in the view. Uh, things kind of glitch a little bit. It generally, like not as good a performance as I'm used to. Now I have a suspicion as to why that is. Uh, which I'm going to test out today. I'm not going to cover graphics card specific settings stuff because there's channels and, and content on the internet that do that uh, way better than I could. What I'm going to cover is how I'm setting up my sim and how I'm configuring my sim. I Really what I'm looking at here is getting the sim running as good as I can and specifically getting rid of that kind of graphical wobbling that you're seeing here on the pillar. If I move my head uh, and we were seeing it during flight where the, the kind of like lines were kind of ripping across the view. When I'm tuning, the first thing that I like to do, I like to see the problem that I'm trying to resolve, right? Like a good scientist, <laughs> okay, we need a baseline. We need to see the problem so that we know that when we change something and we look again, we know that we fix the problem and that it's just that the problem isn't showing up. So what I'm going to do to speed this along is I'm gonna set the airplane ready for start. Let's do that. Um, we're not gonna clear prop or anything like that because again, we're just testing the graphics here. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna taxi around. Uh, you'll notice I'm not requesting any clearance or doing anything properly. I'm just doing this to exacerbate the problem so I can see it because I know that okay so I'm starting to see it here on the dashboard if you if I'm, I'm looking directly at it and you can see that I'm starting to get that kind of juddering going on oh oh see that stutter okay good okay can you see that jumping around on that window frame there okay I hope that's showing up on the video and um, that's a good example of the kind of graphical sort of problems that I'm talking about the juddering and the jumping around that we're going to try and fix today. Okay, we've seen it happen. We know we've got the problem. What's causing it? My, I have an initial hunch about this. Now, I know that with the propeller in VR, the default standard propellers, there's an issue that's documented, which is you can see that kind of effect where you, you're seeing, there's like a waviness in there where you can see the propeller sort of slowing down spin. It's done to simulate the effect of the propeller, how it would look on, on, a, on a camcorder or on a video screen. And I think what that does is that I have read that people have had issues with that, specifically with VR. The, the cost of rendering it can cause issues with things flickering or glitching. It puts, it puts a lot of pressure on the graphics card. And there is a, a VR propeller mod that can fix the problem. This is the VR uh, friendly prop mod. This is on flightsim.to. Uh, I use this occasionally for mods, although I'll be honest, I don't use an awful lot of these. Most of the mods I use are the ones I buy from the, the Microsoft store. 
the VR friendly prop mod multi pass is basically it has all VR friendly prop mods in one add on package um, and it fixes the wobbly images viewed through the prop in VR using well, it says using reprojection, but even without reprojection, I have the issue. Uh, I don't use motion reprojection, so that's probably something else I should point out. Even without motion reprojection, I'm having the issue. Um, and they've listed a bunch of different ones on here. The Bonanza is something I've used before. Uh, the 152, the 172, because as obviously we've gone through, I'm doing general aviation at the moment. The DA40 um, is another one I've used in the past. Um, and on here as well, they do also have the Just Fly Arrow 3, which is the airplane we just saw in the, the image. So uh, to one extent or another, we're seeing this issue. Now, you're probably asking, yeah, but you didn't have this issue in some of your other videos, just some of the more latest ones. Now, that's true. However, more recently, uh, I had to clear out my uh, plugin folder, my community folder, because I had an issue uh, with the sim crashing and I was investigating some problems. Um, so <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator Live. Um, so I, uh, I I cleared out, I did have some of the VR prop mods installed. I, I cleared them out and I, I checked and I forgot to reinstall them. So I figured why not get a more up to date version anyway. Let's install them, go back into the sim and see if we still have the problem. So. Bear with me while I do some downloading and installing, and I'll see you back in the sim. While the propeller's not spinning, I'm not expecting it to make any difference whatsoever to the performance, but once that propeller starts spinning, I'm hoping that we don't see the flickering and the juddering and the jumping that we saw before. So we're gonna test it to see if it works. Is this thing running like it should do? So let's get some throttle on there. Let's get the thing off and we're just going to start moving we've not got any clearance or anything like that again this isn't about that this isn't about are we flying properly this is about tuning up the graphics so we want it as quickly as possible establish if we fix the problem so I'm going to swing around this corner Let's give it the beans down here now instantly I'm still seeing some flickering so that's interesting uh, no there it is it's back again okay so something else is causing this to happen What's the next step on the troubleshooting list? So the next thing I like to do is I, I need some diagnostic tools available. So one of the things I've got installed here, here is OpenXR Toolkit. Now, if you don't already have this and you're using VR for your flight simming, you definitely, definitely need this. I, I definitely find it very, very helpful. Um, one of the things I like about it is if I drop down to the overlay here, the navigation is a bit clunky, so I'm having to hold down the control key and press F1, F2, F3 to navigate. So F3 goes across, F1 comes back, and F2 goes down. You can do control shift F2, which will come back up. I'm doing this with a VR headset on and it's actually incredibly difficult to remember where the keys are. I've got a rough feel with where my fingers are on the keyboard, but you know, you can end up accidentally pressing things. So probably a better solution for that, but th this, this menu isn't necessary. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is turn on frames per second. If I turn on advanced like that, I don't have a target frame rate, so that, that's all I'll do for the minute. So the first value here is frames per second, or what we call frame rate. That's the number of frames that are consecutively displayed per second. So the next value that we have here is the RDR CPU value. Now that's the time that is spent on the CPU, that's your processor, by the application to produce a frame. So a low number is better and a high number is worse. App GPU, this is the time spent on the the GPU, that's your graphics card, by the application to produce a frame. You have to be careful with this with OpenXR Toolkit because if the application is CPU bound, that means if the CPU is not quick enough to give stuff to the GPU, that value could be incorrect or inaccurate. So we just have to bear that in mind. And finally, there's the VRAM. That is the amount of memory that is being consumed, but specifically memory from the graphics card only. So not system memory, that's VRAM. So that's memory from the graphics card. If 
if I start rolling around the airport again like I did before, we'll see what it does to the frame rate and once that graphical, yeah, see that popping starting to happen again. Yeah, it's happening, but the frame rate isn't moving. See, I don't think this is a frame rate problem because it only happens on that left edge. If I look around the rest of the cockpit in trying to diagnose this error, everything else seems to be fine. What number is good for frames per second? So this is debatable. This is really open for debate. The PC gaming sort of standard for monitor gaming is 60 frames per second because once you factor in how long it takes to react to your input and for it to feel natural, 60 frames is kind of the acceptable limit. However, I believe it's like 32 frames per second is what like things like films and that get, uh, like movies get filmed in. So. Um, for VR, I have found anything between 30 to 40 is good. Anything between 40 to 50 is great. And if you're getting 60, uh, drop me a message in the comments because I'd love to know how you're managing that. The next thing for me to do is to go to my graphics settings. So I go to my VR graphics settings. Now, this is a bit of a nuclear option, but you can come here Turn the graphic settings all the way down to low end. And start from the bottom. Hit apply and save. Okay, go back. Uh, oh, reprojection is off. I've actually got this off for the moment because I believe that can make things much worse. Um, so I need to be careful of it. Uh, so now, if I go back, okay, so the, everything's been turned down, all the graphical settings, everything. So you notice straight away that my frame rate's jumped, it's, it's increased. So I'm getting more frames per second. That means more static images are being put in front of my face every second. The higher the frames per second, the smoother the picture that you will get. So if I now turn this up and we go for a little roll, roll around, we'll see if we get the, the graphical glitching coming up again. So it's still happening, but to a lesser extent. So whatever it is, my graphic settings were exacerbating the problem, but they aren't the problem. See, this is where it comes diff becomes difficult to diagnose problems uh, and whether it's the VR headset or whether it's the game or whether it's your graphics card because there's lots of moving parts here so there's lots of different things it could be. It could be my VR settings, it could be my in-game settings, it could be my graphics settings. So the next thing that I'm going to do to try and uh, diagnose the issue, so I'm going to come to this menu and I'm going to set everything to basic. So. I'm going to turn off upscaling because I have upscaling on at the moment. So let's turn that off. So this is just raw native rendered performance. I'm going to turn off experimental turbo mode. Uh, I'm going to leave frame rate throttling on because basically what you can do is you can say, all right, don't max out my graphics card. If you get to 50 frames per second, don't render anymore. And that can actually improve your experience. So I'm going to leave that on because I don't believe that can cause us any harm. I'm not going to record statistics, uh, don't know what that does. So I need to restart the VR session to apply my changes. So if I exit this menu, if I do control tab. Okay, so after a session restart, we're back in the game. And we can see now that we're getting 30 frames per second. This is just raw graphics rendering performance. There's no upscaling going on or anything like that. Um, actually, I've got to say right off the bat, I actually think it's worse. I'm looking at that dash, there's so much flickering going on. If I release the parking brake, now turn the throttle to flat out. Oh my goodness, that's awful. Okay, that's really bad. Oh, that's 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 poor. That's really poor. I've actually made it worse by turning off upscaling. I'm on the ground taxiing around this very basic taxiway and I'm dipping below 30 frames per second, which is not really my ideal. Okay, so this is my biggest bugbear with this. I just want to fly. I just want to get in the sim and I want to fly. 
and I, the reason I like using, using VR is the immersion is fantastic. I feel like I'm in an aeroplane when I do it. Having to faff around with settings like this is, I find it annoying. I feel like I'm wasting my time. And my biggest bugbear with, with my experience of this sim is that you spend a lot of time doing that. And if they could make one improvement for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, I would make that improvement please if you're listening for the love of all that is goodness make the vr experience better rant over uh, let's continue on so we still have the problem to a lesser extent what i'm also going to do now is i'm going to tune my graphics settings back up again i'm going to default to high end and see if that exacerbates the problem the the key to knowing if this is if this is okay is will it reach its locked out frame rate of 40 or will it dip below 30 for me the acceptable window is between 30 and 40 anything above 35 i'm super happy i can still see the problem which i wasn't expecting the problem to be solved if anything this would make it worse however I'm not upset about the performance, how it's doing. 35, 38, hit the low of 32. I think that's probably a little aggressive. So I think what I can do is I can bring it down. If I bring it to medium, if I go to light shafts low, because that's always going to cause performance problems. Bloom is on, I'm fine. Glass cockpit refresh rate low, that's fine. So we tune that graphic setting slightly and one of the things we can see straight away is that my frame rates just jumped up. So turning it back to medium has given us the right level of performance. So I'm gonna leave it on medium for now because that's way better than lower. Look, look at the detail I can see on the tarmac there. But I don't think that's gonna solve our flickering problem. Yeah, flickering problem is there. Because I'm getting a little bit desperate now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the settings. I'm going to do general options and I'm going to try motion reprojection and see if it does anything or if it just makes everything way worse. Nope, still happening. Okay, so that's not fixed it. Uh, that's annoying. So. Let's try depth and motion. Nope, same problem. Let's not waste time. Let's just turn that off. What I want to try now is I want to try it with a different aircraft and see if we have the same problem. Is this an issue with something on this, on this model or not? So let's try a different aircraft and see if we have the same problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try one of the stock aircraft and see something without preferably something without a glass cockpit i think the 152 actually might be a good shout let's give the 152 a go straight away i'm noticing some flickering going on i can see it on the window and i can see it on the uh, bonnet handle let's look at what we've eliminated we know it's not a problem with the graphical quality settings because we turned those right down check we know it's not an issue with the upscaling because we turn that off, check. We also know that it's not a problem with the VR prop mod because even with the VR prop mod in, it still happens, check. We know it's not an issue specifically with this aircraft. Um, simply, We know it's not simply a problem with the Just Flight Arrow 3 because we've, checking, we've checked multiple planes now and we have the same problem with, with both of the issues with both those aircraft. So, what else could the problem be? The only other thing I think it could be is something to do with my actual VR headset, like a setting in my VR, in my Oculus, that's causing this to happen. So that's the next place for me to go check. So we've done all that testing, we've tried to fix the problem, but we haven't fixed the problem yet. And something just dawned on me and it hit me like a truck. I don't have the problem in 2D mode. So we know the problem is isolated to VR. So that makes it feel like it's more likely to be a problem 
maybe with my Oculus setup than it actually is with a sim. That is to say, although other VR games work fine for me, there's something about my Oculus setup that this game doesn't like. So I came back to the Piper Arrow because I actually now I want the problem to happen really noticeably so that I can make a settings change and see if I've fixed it. Uh, we're seeing this happen. I'm going to taxi over to that bit where I can taxi around and not run into anything. It's always good, right? Definitely got the problem happening. I'm going to change the ASW setting and we'll see how it looks. So the first setting that I'm going to try is auto. So we've just switched over to auto. Let's unleash the beast. And it looks like it's still there to me. Auto doesn't fix it. What do the other settings look like? Do you know, it'd be really handy if I could test this without my headset on because it's really irritating to keep looking at the screen. Let's try adaptive. Let's try it again. Yeah, I can see it happening again. That's not worked. Let's try something else. on at the moment because that seems like the best one so far 45 hertz forced do you know what ladies and gentlemen i feel so confident i've, I've got confidence no i don't 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 destroy my own self-confidence we're trying 45 hertz now to see how that's working ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen that's fixed the problem that has fixed it. Yay! Applause sound goes here. The crowd goes wild. Look at that, it's all gone. It's all gone. That's perfect. That is actually perfect. Oh, I'm so chuffed. That's all gone. No more problem. No more issue. Oh, I'm so, so pleased. You have no idea. One, because it means I can go to bed now. <laughs> but, but two, because I don't like to let a problem beat me. It means that I can actually do the thing I want to do, which is just fly my airplane. Yay! So I'm looking around now. I've got no juddering on that wing. I've got no juddering on the cockpit. My frame rate is at a smooth 40. Ladies and gentlemen, this is good. I am happy with this. And that's it. If you've reached this point in the video, I just want to say you're awesome and thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, slap a like on, let me know. If you want to see more great artificial aviation content, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.